I'm Bishop David Malloy of Rockford, and welcome to this, our meditation for Wednesday of Holy Week. Soy Obispo David Malloy de la Diócesis de Rockford. Gracias por participar con nosotros en esta nuestra reflexión para el miércoles de la Semana Santa. We begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father of love, source of all blessings, help us to pass from our old life of sin to the new life of grace. Prepare us for the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. Take care, my brothers, lest any of you have an evil and unfaithful spirit and fall away from the living God. Encourage one another daily while it is still today so that no one grows hardened by the deceit of sin. We have become partners of Christ only if we maintain to the end that confidence with which we began. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This passage that we just read from the letter to the Hebrews is a sort of a summary statement about faith. It addresses all of us in a way that is helpful as well for this Holy Week that we are in the midst of and getting ready in particular for the sacred days of the Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday going into Easter Sunday. We're preparing to recall during that time once more, the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And we are called to truly accept the reality of Christ's death and to long for our share in the reality of his resurrection as well. That was not only Christ rising from the dead, but it is offered to us, the fulfillment of our nature, the fulfillment and glory of our bodies and our souls with him in the resurrection. But that's a lifelong struggle. It's a struggle that requires prayer, that requires the sacraments, that requires moral living. And of course, it requires charity with those who are in need. All of this in imitation of Christ himself. This letter to the Hebrew then reminds us of three important tasks summarizing our spiritual lives. It begins by saying in that passage, be careful not to fall away. Having begun well, we can never stop. We can never be satisfied, we must say, with the level of holiness that we have been granted, that we've attained, because the holiness of God is infinite. There is always more for us to do, always more for us to enter into in Christ himself. And of course, that means that we do that in this context of this world that is filled with so many temptations. The world tells us, for example, how out of date we are, how unpopular we are, things that are so sensitive to the modern mind. Through all of those temptations and difficulties and struggles and tiredness, it's our task not to fall away. The second thing that reading told us is to encourage one another and do so daily. Living out that faith, first of all, strengthens ourselves. We become, as it were, a witness to ourselves. Yes, I truly believe, and I live what I believe, everything that Christ has told me. But our spiritual lives, our goodness, our sacrifices, even our joy, all of that contributes to the good of others. We cannot know how often it is that through grace, someone else looks at us and says, if they could do it, I can do it. They might be saying they don't feel that they can take one more step there's something that we say or we do, and it strengthens them to go on further. The reality is that we must help each other to get to heaven. The third part of that reading tells us to become partners with Christ and to keep our confidence. We are partners with Christ. We share with him the human nature that he has taken on. We share with him a birth. We share with him the sufferings, the growing up in life, we share with him also the death that he went through. But as we are partners with him, we have that great confidence in him 
in his teaching, in his promises, and deeply and taken together, we might say, we have confidence in how much Christ loves us, that he would come back for us and take us to the house of the Father. It is for us to remain faithful, to remain dedicated to Christ. All of this, in a certain sense, is a summary of the life and the reality of faith. And it's good that we have that on this particular version of our meditation, because this will in fact be the concluding meditation in this series. We began almost exactly a year ago, at the time when the outbreak of the coronavirus first arrived, especially here in the United States and in Illinois. And at that time, with so many things being shut down, so much separation, even my own opportunity as bishop to be out among you, to be with you, was curtailed. And so in order to have this continuing opportunity for being with you, for reflecting and praying with you, we put on this series of talks and meditations. I wish to express my very sincere thanks to the staff at the Chancery, which helped with the technical details of this. But most especially, I wish to express my concluding thanks to all of you who have followed this set of meditations and reflections, perhaps weekly, perhaps stopping in from time to time. Whatever the case, thank you. And let's do exactly what we were told together by this reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Keep our faith so that we don't fall away. Encourage one another daily and remain partners with Christ with great confidence. Let us conclude with a prayer. Let us pray. Lord, help us to do your will that your church may grow and become more faithful in your service. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you go in peace and have a truly blessed Triduum and a very blessed Easter.